Breaking news, Canon launches a 410 megapixel full frame sensor. Trump issues a 15% tariff on Japanese products, which will definitely increase your camera prices really soon. Canon launches the first free firmware update that adds passwords to your cameras. I've tested it and I'll tell you just how much it sucks. It's a lot. There's finally a challenger to DJI's drone monopoly, and I think they actually have a chance this time. I'll tell you all about it, but first I want to thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Head to squarespace.com slash Tony to set up your presence on the web. This could be a personal project. It could be a business. Really, anything that you can imagine deserves its own space, its own custom domain name, custom email addresses, because you can set up a store. You can take appointments from clients, have a menu for your restaurant, connect to third party services for things like automatically shipping your products. Squarespace makes it so easy to set up a website you literally can't afford not to. I've been hosting my website with Squarespace for like 12 years now, and I've never had a problem with it. I regularly go in and update my pictures, rearrange things, add new features, and it's been amazing. So try it out for yourself. No commitment, no credit card, no automatic subscription. Go to squarespace.com slash Tony. Try it out. And when you love it, the coupon code Tony will save you 10%. Thank you, Squarespace. Now, on August 1st, Trump's new Japanese tariffs take effect. That will raise the current tariff from 10% to 15%. If you've been following this news, you'll know the Japanese camera companies have just raised their prices to accommodate the previous 10% tariff. So now they're going to have to do that again, to pad and cover those extra 5% import costs. Now, the 10% tariffs were passed pretty much directly on to us, the consumers, so no doubt the 15% tariffs will be passed on to us too. That's important to understand, because if you have any purchases to make for Japanese products, like Canon, Nikon, stuff made in Japan, not necessarily China, that's not changing, uh, make it soon because those prices haven't hit yet. There's some delay where the camera companies will take a little while to adapt, a few weeks probably, but go ahead and get your orders placed soon. Now let's talk about Canon's firmware update. This firmware update adds passwords to cameras like the Canon R5 Mark II and the Canon R1. That's something we've been begging them for for so many years because we need a little bit of security in there, right? But I have some rants about it, so just bear with me here. The first is about the download process for the firmware. This is ridiculous. All you have to do is download a file and copy it to your camera, but Canon makes you choose the operating system that you're using to download it. Because Canon thinks that Mac computers can't open the same files as Windows computers. So they take their firmware and they package it in two separate file formats for Windows PCs and Mac OS. This used to be a problem, but starting in 2003, Mac OS has supported zip files, the standard that literally everybody on the entire planet uses when you need to compress and transfer a file. That was a long time ago. To put that into perspective, 2003 is the same year MySpace launched. The iPhone did not exist until 2007. This is 22 years, Canon, 22 years you've had some poor release engineer packaging the same files up in two different formats, and you've been making every user make a totally unnecessary choice of their operating system just to download a file, Canon is time, just use zip. <laughs> now, once you get the firmware update installed, it's bad. <laughs> First, as soon as you turn your camera on, it requires you to enter a password, except it's not a password. Password has the word word in it, and you expect it to be uppercase and lowercase letters, numbers. You have to put in a six digit number, you have to re-enter it, and then the next time you turn on your camera, if you want to actually shoot with your camera, you have to enter that same six digit pin. So make sure you don't forget it. Now, if you enter it successfully upon the next startup, you have the option to disable that passcode in the future. Just check that checkbox. And but well, that's weird because they made you enter it, but then they immediately give you the ability to ignore it, but not immediately the, the next time you start it, which could be long enough that you still screws you over on a photo shoot. But then I tried to figure out what that pin was actually protecting. It's not providing anti-theft because you'll notice when it starts up, there's a little box there to just bypass the pin by resetting the camera's settings. People still have access to all the personal photos that you have on your camera if they steal your camera. So they can steal your camera, steal all the photos on it, and then sell the camera. This does nothing to help any of that. <laughs> all I can think that it does is it protects the privacy 
of your camera settings. I mean, maybe you have an FTP password stored that it needs to be. Anyway, this is so close to what we were asking for Canon and yet still so far away. In drone news, Insta360 has decided to challenge DJI. So it's one Chinese company against another and that's actually why I think this just might work. Insta360 has announced the upcoming anti-gravity drone and we have a few specs about it. We know it's going to be small enough that it, you won't have to register it, which means less than 249 grams. It's supposed to have 8K video, which most 360 cameras have 8K video because you're recording everything in all directions and thus the publishing will require lots of cropping. So you record in 8K, but usually you're publishing in like 2K or just HD even. And it's gonna be available in August. That's about all we know right now, plus this reel of cool footage that you're seeing. But I do think there's some potential here. To have 360 footage from a drone means you don't have to carefully compose the shot while you're filming. And I, I think that could be pretty powerful. It means you can go as wide as you want. You won't have to put on a wide angle lens onto your Mavic. You can just film everything. It also means when flying, the pilot can concentrate on the forward facing camera view and not worry about how things are gonna be composed. So if, for example, you were trying to track a car sideways with one of DJI's drones, you have to actually fly the drone sideways and that means you don't have a forward point of view. You might just crash right into something. But with this, you could just fly forward and then as long as you stay next to the car, you could reframe it later. So I'm really excited to see what they do. And in another 360 news, DJI is attacking Insta360, the biggest 360 camera manufacturer, by launching the Osmo 360, a 360 degree action camera. 360 degree cameras were cool like a decade ago when we thought we'd all be wearing VR headsets, but nobody wants a VR headset. And instead, what people are doing is just using them as action cameras where you don't have to point the camera at anything. You just film everything and then frame it up in software. Later, you end up with huge files and a bit of an editing pain in the butt, but it does work. And I'm probably going to be picking one up for my filming really soon. The specs that we know so far is it will have 8K. It will shoot 120 megapixel stills. Uh, it has a one inch square sensor, which is kind of unique. Here's a name we haven't mentioned in a while, GoPro. GoPro is also launching a 360 camera, the GoPro Max 2. Now I tested the original GoPro Max in 2019 and it straight up sucked, but they've had a lot of time to work out the kink, six years to be exact. So I'm excited to see what the next version does. And I'll definitely pit that against DJI and Insta360's new cameras to figure out which one I'm going to use for my own purposes. So subscribe to see that review. Now let's talk about Canon's 410 megapixel full frame sensor. You can buy either color or black and white versions of the sensor. It can shoot that full 410 megapixels at eight frames per second, which means pretty fast readout speed, or it can downsample it to a huge 100 megapixels and do 24 frames per second, enough to like shoot reasonable video. This is huge because Canon has not upped their megapixel count since the 2015 release of the Canon 5DSR, a camera that I promptly bought and loved and used it for everything from studio to landscapes to wildlife photography. Nobody has really upped megapixels substantially since then in the full frame world. Unfortunately, I don't think we're getting this 410 megapixel sensor in a consumer camera anytime soon. Most likely Canon is just going to be selling it to uh, specialized things like maybe reconnaissance planes or security cameras. Canon, I really would love to see you put this sensor in a camera. There's a big demand for higher megapixels. And, and honestly, I could use an exciting camera launch to actually talk about, like give us something interesting, give us something passionate, do something other than just increasing the frames per second and the readout speed of the sensor. In the comments down below, I'd love to hear, would you like Canon to launch that 410 megapixel sensor in a camera? Because somebody from Canon has to go through the comments and they have to summarize it. So if there's a bunch of people there saying, yeah, I want a really high megapixel camera, maybe they'll actually do it. <laughs> and don't forget to check out our sponsor Squarespace whenever you need a website. Go to squarespace.com slash Tony. Try this out free, no credit card or anything. Just, just try it out see how easy it is. You can choose different looks, different templates, and then customize everything. Build your own pages. Get AI's help if you want it, and you'll see how beautiful and simple it is to have a Squarespace site. I've had mine for like 12 years now and it's operated flawlessly. I've updated it and refreshed it continually, and I still love it after all these years, and I bet you will too. 
when you do love it and you want to sign up, the coupon code TONY will get you a pretty good discount. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye.